Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, check this out. I was just doing my daily due diligence, right? Sifting through the Harvard Business Review. Because, you know, that's what I be doing in my free time sometimes. I just be going through academic journals a lot. <laughs> I came across this one article, I found it really interesting, it was titled this. Study says 95% of NBA 2K players will be shot creators or stretch bigs by the end of 2018. So I got to thinking, and keep in mind, this study is coming from the University of fucking Common Sense. Common Sense, guys, is one of the most popular universities out there. Here's what Common Sense sense tells me is that there's gonna be two builds dominating the game real soon. Now, I'm not sure about Pro-Am, because I haven't played Pro-Am yet, so I'm talking about the park. But in the park, you will not find a shortage of seven foot stretch fours. Not those garbage ass stretch fives with silver limitless range. I'm not talking about those ones. I'm talking about the stretch fours with 90 open shot threes, gold limitless range, and a, an uncanny ability to shoot in your eye. Like, I'll be streaming on Facebook, and I, you better f***ing click the link in the description and watch my streams where I'm fighting you. Ladies and gentlemen, it be, it be stretch big shooting in my eye. And there was that one day where Mike Wang changed his sliders before he reverted back to the previous sliders where it was fine. Where if I put a hand up, he actually missed the shot. And here's the main thing that people will tell me. Agent, you have a 6'4 play sharp with a minimum wingspan. Did you think you can contest my shot? Wait, wait. Do you think that you have to be seven foot to contest a seven footer shot? It's like he's never played basketball a day in his life. A video game or in real life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now, if things keep going the way they're going, everybody will be shot creators and stretch bigs. Let me tell you why I know that. It's not just because of the fantastic article written from the professor from the University of Logic and Common Sense. It's because I now created a shot creator and I'm gonna start grinding my pure sharp. <laughs> if I've done it, don't you think everybody else has either considered or is already doing it? If you want to play competitive or that if you just want to win games you will come across a pure shot creator at point guard here is the ideal lineup that everybody will be running on the park in two to three months either a pure shot creator or a shot maker at point guard at the wing either a pure lockdown or they can opt to go for a seven foot stretch four and then at the center go with the shot creating post score it, right one on one you can't beat a post score and then you put shot creating on it and then all of a sudden he has the ability to shoot threes with like a 70 open shot three. Oh my god we were playing these one guys last night and it just hit me not only were they shoving on inbounds they were doing the inbound glitch it was so tactical the way they were playing and I had never seen cheese like that in my life I, I backed out and I almost wanted to delete my play shot because why why would I want to wait stand still and then shoot my shot if I can always fade bro I can always fade like this and I will never miss these shots these shots is fucking automatic ladies and gentlemen especially coming off pick and roll maestro Hall of Fame difficult shots Woo! give me some more of these fades ladies and gentlemen 100% shooting from the field now I don't know how it's gonna work on prime it's probably gonna be different there and I'm not even worried about that just yet but here's here's what I'm doing and here's where I'm at right now so you guys know uh, pretty much most of my if not all my videos to this point on 2k19 have been on my Sharpshooter secondary playmaker primary. Now that build is fine. It's a build that I enjoy playing with, but it's not it's not the best build. It's not. Literally the only advantage it has to shot makers is shot makers don't have silver limitless range. But if you have a pure shot creator, <laughs> let me check, because I'm not sure. Let me let me talk to the professor from the University of Logic and Common Sense real quick. He's not picking up. <laughs> ding, ding, ding! We have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. The pure shot creator has silver limitless anyway. Oh, Lord. Jesus. So this is, this is what's gonna happen. Either you end up making one of these builds because you realize it's the best way to win games, it's the way to go, or you just stick with the build you have that isn't one of those builds, and then every time you play one of those builds, you'll get infuriated. A shot creator can hit an open fade sometimes, and in the back of my mind, there's a whisper going, fuck that shot creator. But like, it was an open fade. That's designed, he was designed to make that. Really, I guess I'm just, it might, is this, this is, this might be spite. This could be anger. I'm, maybe I'm just angry that the build that's the greatest in the game is the one that I don't have. Or maybe that the build that's the greatest in the game is very easy to use. Or maybe very easy to abuse. Listen, I don't know. All I, all I know is this. I saw on my Twitter feed this article come out 
from the University of Logic and Common Sense and it worried me. Let me find out 95% of people choose to be those two archetypes. You know how dead set boring it's gonna make the game? That's not what balance is. Like, the game is not balanced if everybody decides to be one archetype, then one archetype is clearly overpowered. And I don't mind it, I just made my slashing secondary shot creating primary. And, and that build reminds me a lot of, and you guys remember the video, my slasher from last year. So I, I created that build and I'm gonna use that build and it just so happens that it is the most all around dominant build in the game. You can shoot threes from limitless range, drive, attack the hoop, you can fade, do standing shots, you can even somewhat dribble with like a 75 ball control and speed with ball. Hey, it won't be long until everybody figures it out. Not just the people who watch YouTube and subscribe to my channel and leave on post notifications. I'm talking about the guys, the old heads. I'm talking about the little kids that just came on after school. Everybody in the neighborhood at some point is gonna get hit with a contested fade in their face from a shock fader. Or a pure stretch four is gonna shoot in their eye while their hand is up using manual contest. And they're, it's gonna click, it's gonna click, and they're gonna be like, that's what I have to create. It's like when you play a game of Rainbow Six. If I use Ash in Rainbow Six, I'll be ass. But then when I see Macy J play with him on, on, on YouTube, he does fantastic. And then I'm like, yo, I have to use Ash. And I find out I'm ass with Ash. It's gonna be, this, they're gonna see somebody on YouTube or somebody in their park dropping everybody off with contested fades. And then there, there the idea will spawn. And it will grow into branches and leaves until he's a full sprouted giant ass shot creator. Until he's learned the cheese like everybody else, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Here's the thing. Don't touch the badges for the shock creators. Although, like, a lot of question marks, whatever. Keep those the same. You don't have to nerf difficult shots. You don't even have to change any of the shooting sliders. Literally, all that has to be done is you take the shot contest and you move it just a little bit. Just a little bit so that when I put my hand up, the shit actually counts. Like, ah, you did that, you're done. No need to touch the game anymore. If you haven't, at this point, adjusted to the stealing, that might be on you, ladies and gentlemen, because the stealing is fine. There is a lot of spam still, but whatever. It's not as successful as it was on day one. I almost folded last night, ladies and gentlemen. I got so infuriated, and it wasn't even just because of shot contest or whatever. I was just losing and mad and angry. I needed something to direct my anger at, and I put out this tweet saying, welcome me to Team Shot Creator. If you can't beat the AIDS, you can beat the AIDS, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so ready to fade in your face. And then I presumed to grind my slashing shot creator, cause like I came off stream and that's exactly what I felt like doing. So I'm, I'm in the early stages of the grind so far. Here's what my attributes is looking like. I'm 87 overall, but let's, let's pay attention to some things. See, here's the thing. I don't mind the attributes. I don't mind the badges that my shot creators have. I just think that if I'm being contested, I should probably miss, right? Or maybe you should affect it more. I'm not opposed to the occasional contested shot hitting because you had badges working for you, attributes working for you, in everything in the perfect position and a fantastic release. I'm not opposed to that. But it, it happens so consistently, it's a shot that competitive players actively take because they know it'll hit with so much confidence. And then because you're hitting it with such great confidence, we have to hedge on the screen. And when we hedge on the screen, we leave the rebound open so you get six more attempts at your contested shots. <sighs> Ball handling is a 77. There is no playmaking in this player. I just want to remind you. The three point shot is 72, but it will max out at an 80. There is no sharp shooting in this build. Just want to remind you. Of course, it's a shot creator, so the mid range is great. I could fade, of course. I'm going to be great at fading. My dunks is going to be on point. Not only is it a primary shot creator, but a secondary slasher. And this is the perfect all around build, ladies and gentlemen. I'm kind of slow with the badges. I've been working on my play sharp. I'm literally like a game away from getting gold ankle breaker and I've already given up on the player. So I don't know where that stands. Look, this is how dead I am on the badges. Literally don't have any of my primary badges. I got some of the easy ones in practice like limitless range and defensive stopper. Then you continue to go down the list and you're like, why does a slashing shot critter have ankle breaker? Not sure, or pick dodger. Can't figure that one out. I have pickpocket, postman technician. Why do I have chase down artist? Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure catch and shoot goes to silver on this player. I can't be sure. Put back king. Okay, you know, some of these slashing badges make sense. Deep range, dead eye, that does not belong on this player. Oh, pff, whatever, I'll take it. This is gonna be my build. 
I will start to grind this build because I want to come out with park videos on this build. I know I'm not a top tier playmaker, so sometimes I come out with videos and I have been working on my dribble moves, but I'm not going to be the best one out there. But I've been playing the wing forever though. So 2K17, 18, and now 19. That I feel 100% comfortable. Give me a couple weeks with a player and I can start to dominate. I, I can't get an inch of privacy on the park, ladies and gentlemen. It's ridiculous. I load into parks and then run into this, the crevices of the alley. And then somebody sees my name on the phone and it's like, oh my God, here's the YouTuber. And they literally spend the whole time trying to find me. Even if I hit in an alley, people would find me and just wait by me. Like, like a seagull who found out I have bread. <laughs> I don't want this entire video to be angry and negative, so let me just say this. 2K19 has been way more fun to start off than 2K18 was by far. You could have looked at everybody to start 2K18 and they would have told you, this game is ass. 2K19, like I have people hitting me up saying, Agent, bro, you better get back home before 9 p.m. because you got to play trivia. Or, yo, Gold Rush is on double XP, you better hop on. Yo, Agent, we're hopping on the wreck, we got four, are you trying to join? Like none of this was happening in 2K18. In 2K18, you, you, I had to convince people, put together like persuasive messages to get them to hop on and play the game. It's so easy to get people to record videos with or to just play with, stream with, whatever, on 2K19. There's a lot of glitches, of course, the got next will fuck up every two seconds and like I'll join through my phone and they'll send me to the wrong playground and then I'll join through the party, they'll send me to the wrong playground. Hey yo, send me an invite. Maybe that'll work. Nope, it'll still send me to the wrong playground. That's probably the most annoying of all of them. I'll go to the subway and then I'll think like, maybe I'll come out a different playground. Nuh uh, I went back out the same exact playground as if there's only one park server in the entire world right now. So like when those stuff get ironed out, man, oh no, don't even, do mm -hmm. I can't even wait to play that game. But right now, <laughs> this game still has some work to do to it. It's still fun though. I will be creating lots and lots of builds and grinding lots and lots of builds and having fun with lots and lots of builds. I'll try out a lot of different stuff. So I'll have a shot creator and a playmaker and I'll have a pure sharp and probably a stretch. I'll probably have a pure glass cleaner and a slashing post score. So regardless of what update comes or what patch comes, I'll always have a build that can still do well in those circumstances. I get that not everybody has the time or the money in some cases to do all of that. So let me just close the video saying this. We all want a fun, balanced game. Now since the game is already out, there's some people that are gonna have their internal biases. Now I've never been one to have biases regardless of what archetype I have. In 2K17, I was basically begging the devs to patch my sharpshooter because it was ridiculous what they did to the game after they added the grand badge. Or even at patch before patch one drop and the sliders was ridiculous and there was zero game testing, that was also crazy. But a lot of what what I'm seeing is like shot creators or stretch bigs mad. They're mad because they think that their build is going to be patched and it's going to be agent's fault. First of all, if the devs listen to everything I said, the game would be perfect. They don't, all right? Nobody has that kind of power. At the end of the day, you can send a million tweets or make a video or talk about it on a stream and regardless of what you think you want them to do, they'll do what they want to do because it's their game and they'll create, they have a vision of the game they want to create and they're going to try and paint that image using the sliders. Mike Ryan playing Disco Tech. I just saw the study and I was worried. I'm worried for the future of 2K19. This game has so much potential, but I guarantee you if nothing changes, there will be nothing stopping all of these guys from making the same exact builds one after the other. A game that's balanced should not have that. A game that's balanced should have all kinds of different archetypes playing competitively. And then whether you have a lockdown, which are fantastic builds, you can dominate. Or a playmaker, you can dominate. And you can do it at the highest level without having to resort to cheese and glitches. And right now, it's just cheese, glitches, and fading shots. And then more is contested fading shots. And I don't want that to be the future of 2K19. That's all I'm trying to say. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to hop on and play some park. If you guys enjoyed the video, and drop a like, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.